So in my quest to find everything concerning Britain and the American Civil War, I've brought you to Gettysburg on Oak Hill, where there are two fascinating pieces of mid-Victorian technology, a little bit of Britain on America's battlefields, the Whitworth Cannon. And there were Whitworth Cannons here at Gettysburg. These are not the original ones to the battle, but they were Confederate imported British cannons. In the 1850s, Sir Joseph Whitworth designed the Whitworth rifle using new advances in metallurgy, in ballistics, and in precision measurement to create a fascinating new weapon which used hexagonal rifling. And it was very precise, very effective. It had some downsides. It was, it was very finicky. It was very expensive. And that, was, that still is a lot of the drawback of the Whitworths. Uh, my friend Brett at Paper Cartridges has done a extensive video on the Whitworth rifle. So check out his um, documentary and experimental archaeology on the Whitworth rifle. But throughout the 1850s, uh, Sir Joseph Whitworth was asked to apply those principles to a cannon. And the Whitworth cannon was designed. And you can see it has the hexagonal rifling, as does the rifle. But what's different about the Whitworth cannon is it's also a breech loader. And as a breech loader, this bolt would have been unscrewed and drawn back. It would have been opened like that. A bolt would have been placed inside and there they had both solid shot and shell with explosive inside. And then a proprietary cartridge would have been placed inside that had the requisite powder and wadding, etc. Now, a number of these guns were already imported by the time the war began. And even though we don't really think of the Whitworth as being one of the main Civil War artillery options, people knew they existed at the time. In fact, one of the best accounts of the Whitworth was actually published in Harper's Weekly in June of 1861. The Whitworth rifled cannon obtains its remarkable power and accuracy by adoption of a polygonal spiral bore of uniform pitch more rapid than could be obtained by grooves. The 12-pounder one, of which was a few days since exhibited in this city, with a bore of 3.2 inches, has one turn in 60 inches. It is 8 feet long and breech-loading. The projectile is oblong, made of cast iron, and formed to fit the grooves of the barrel. The breech of the gun is covered with a cap which screws on, and on being removed, swings to one side upon a hinge. The projectile is then inserted into the open breech, and followed by a cartridge case containing the powder, and capped by a cake of wax or other lubricating composition. The breech cap is then swung to and screwed on by its handles. As there is no exhalation of gases from the breech cap, one of the worst features of the breech-loading gun is avoided. The range of this gun is said to be greater than the Armstrong gun, and its accuracy more positive. Guns of this size herein described cost £300 in England. All of this stuff would have been very expensive, would have required um, being imported, and that's um, so much material is imported on both sides, produced in Britain, and either has to run the blockade or is directly imported um, to, to the north. So these were purchased and then bought, brought over to the Confederacy. Um, a very small amount of these guns were brought over. And for um, the Confederacy, there were many people that did not see the, the advantage in the Whitworth gun because this, it really is essentially like its rifle counterpart, a precision weapon. Um, this would have been able to fire up to about six miles. Um, it would have been very precise should you have the range and the line of sight on your target. But it didn't have that, that, um, that particular wow factor. It, it wasn't a 300-pound a, uh, parrot gun. It didn't have 
some of the uh, explosive capabilities of some of the other guns. Um, and then again, it, it, it had a lot of drawbacks with its um, production and with its expense. And even, even in the British Army, the Armstrong gun kind of took over more. Now, as the war progressed, sometimes the Whitworths saw more specific applications. Instead of just joining um, a battery with their bombardment, they might be tasked with counter-battery fire, accurately putting fire down on a single artillery piece or artillery battery, or they would be tasked with um, coastal defense, since they needed to put accurate fire on moving targets at great distances. Now we know they were used here at Gettysburg. Soldiers described a particular shrieking sound of the Whitworth bolts going overhead. Now one of my favorite accounts of the Whitworth gun actually comes from someone who we've talked about before, Captain Fitzgerald Ross, the Englishman in Austrian service. And he was the observer that was with Fremantle and Justice Scheibert and Francis Lawley on Seminary Ridge on the third day. But he has an account of um, the Whitworths in Confederate service. He says, There are a few Whitworth guns which are very accurate and of great range, but require much care. The breech has sometimes blown off or disabled through carelessness in loading. This was especially the case with breech-loading guns. And it's also worth noting that Whitworth produced a muzzle-loading variety of the Whitworth gun that um, overcame a lot of the drawbacks of the breech loader, and there are a number of references to the muzzle-loading variety being used in the Civil War. And the much larger 70-pounder naval version of the gun was definitely a muzzle loader, and a number of those were actually captured by the U.S. Navy from the blockade runner Princess Royal in January of 63. One of the other interesting things about this gun in particular is that we see a battlefield edition um, that was not on the standard Whitworth cannon. It's a little edition that's been added to the breech because when the lanyard is pulled, the gas is going to shoot straight out of the breech here and it's going to go towards some of the crew. So this was added later um, presumably not by the British manufacturers to direct gas up and down rather than back towards the crew. Now there are a number of attempts to fabricate ammunition, to make parts, to make adjustments, to make it more practical for use in the U.S., but ultimately because of the difficulties with importation and with so few being imported, um, the Whitworth really doesn't see that much use in the Civil War. Um, obviously, one of the biggest factors being the cost. And for a cash-strapped uh, Confederacy, sometimes it was difficult to um, make an allocation like that. And there really are a lot of accounts out there of how different people felt about the Whitworth. I mean, there's there's a lot of complaints, and there's a lot of uh, glowing reviews. In fact, um, Josiah Gorgas, the head of Confederate Ordnance, even says that they did admirable execution. But of course, he also knows the, the drawbacks and the limitations of, you know, becoming reliant on a finicky imported British cannon. And although it had its difficulties and drawbacks, there were Whitworths at some of the most pivotal moments of the Civil War. They were there at Bull Run. They were here at Gettysburg. They were at the Siege of Petersburg. They were defending the coast during the war. And although they're limited in their application, they are certainly memorable for their service in the war. So these are the Whitworth guns at Gettysburg. Like so many things in the American Civil War, um, arms, equipment, uniforms, all sorts of things were imported from Britain to America's battlefields. And this is just a little bit more of Britain in the American Civil War. Lastly, I just want to thank everyone who helped in the production of this video, from my Gettysburg friends who watched me walk around in circles 
around these cannons for quite a long time. To Brett, who was pivotal in my research for both the rifle and the cannon, again, check out his Whitworth video on paper cartridges. I also highly recommend reading Suppliers to the Confederacy. Um, a lot of great resources, um, a lot of great research, and a lot of great information on everything that was imported to the Confederacy, from the Whitworth cannon to the Enfield musket to smaller items like buttons, buckles, and uniforms. I also recommend checking out the Research Press because they've been doing a lot of interesting research on the Whitworth, both the rifle and the cannon, and I'm going to put the link in the description to Research Press and some of their upcoming projects below.